Mateo311 here, and I'll be your Iron Rebellion operator for this evening. We're supposed to start off with the basic tutorial, but that's some boring <laughs> So let's try something fun, like combat training. That's right, today we're jumping right into the action with Iron Rebellion, a VR mech sim seven years in the making. It's finally left early access and the full 1.0 version is available right now for both Steam VR and the Meta Quest. For $24.99, you get six different truly unique mech classes to customize with 12 different weapons and 16 system augmentations. Now, once you build the mech of your dreams, or at least the one required for the current task, you can then battle it out in some online PvP 4v4 action across seven official maps, 18 community maps, and four different gameplay modes. There's cross-platform support for Steam VR and Quest owners, and it will eventually also support a flat version that's coming at a later date. But Iron Rebellion was built for the ground up for VR, utilizing both an excellent cockpit interface and natural feeling motion control. Now, today's video has been sponsored by Black Beach Studio, so I'll be keeping my opinions down to a minimum. I'm just gonna show off some gameplay and talk about the overall mechanics and my experience. But I will say, I'm really happy to support this studio because it's a team of only two members. So this is about as indie as it gets. This title was entirely self-funded and they worked with their community throughout the past seven years, making the game better and better. So that's the type of project I love to get behind. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the action. Now let's start things off with obviously one of the most important aspects in a mech sim. And that's of course those beefy multi-ton robots that you'll be piloting. Now, of course we get your typical light, medium and heavy mechs. But Iron Rebellion takes it a step further, giving each of the six classes a unique special ability. This is everything from cloaks, energy shields, resupply kits, airstrikes, proximity sensors, and a good old fashioned EMP. So this leads to a ton of strategic combat that we could check out right here. Now, adding even more strategy is the massive amount of customizations that you can do to your mechs. You could set up multiple different loadouts for every single class, customizing both your weaponry and augments, creating everything from jack of all trades to very situational builds. In a gameplay mode like Team Deathmatch, you'll usually want to stick to the weapons you're most proficient in or change things up based on what your enemy is bringing to the table. But in more objective-based gameplay modes, things such as long-range weaponry or the ability to resupply your teammates or protect them with an energy shield could be vital to the win. So make sure to experiment with all of the different classes and equipment available. Now, even more important to the overall gameplay is how the actual controls feel. As stated, this was designed from the ground up for VR, and it definitely shows. There's a unique control scheme that has you moving your mech by rotating your hand at the elbow. This 100% gives you the sensation that you're controlling a larger vehicle. Now, all of the other systems inside of your mech are controlled by physical switches inside of your cockpit. You'll have to power on your systems, pull a lever to retrieve or drop off cargo, select damaged systems and issue repairs, and finally prime and fire off your special abilities. 
Overall, this feels great. It's not clunky or cumbersome, and it definitely adds to the overall mech sim experience. So we have solid controls, tons of mech customization and strategic combat. So the final aspect is the combat and those four separate gameplay modes. One-on-one -on -one fights feel solid, and depending on your mech, it usually comes down to agility versus firepower, but team-based combat is what this game is all about. There's a massive difference in controlling a light, agile mech that basically runs laps around the map compared to the lumbering heavies. You definitely don't want to mess with those guys up close and personal, but they're not going to be making it to a main objective anytime soon. Now, the overall combat impact when you're both attacking and getting struck is nice and beefy. It almost feels like you're taking some actual hits, and I actually turned on the audio to haptics mode for both my B haptics vest and rumbler in my Roto VR chair. Now, I know that's not an option for the average player, but it did add a nice little extra kick. Okay, so I just wanted to finish off this video with some final notes, my overall opinion, and a little bit of a selfish take. So let's get into that. This is a solid mech sim. I'm surprised we don't have more mech sims in VR. They feel like a no brainer. I thought we get tons of them and we have like two. Now this is the second one. This is obviously a labor of love in development for seven ish years with a two man team. That's absolutely incredible. And that deserves props right there, but you still got to rate the game on the game itself. Overall, I was impressed. I feel like, you know, five hours into the game and I just scratched the surface of the customization and strategy that's available. And ultimately, this is a very solid mech sim and I want the game to succeed for selfish reasons. Not because this is a sponsored video, but because I want a single player campaign. Multiplayer is awesome, but it's not what I gravitate to these days. I want a deep, rich single player campaign and these developers are pretty awesome. I think they could deliver something fantastic if somebody gives them you know, some extra money and maybe a few extra people on the team. So hopefully that can happen. Now, if I forgot to mention anything about this game, you have additional questions, drop them down below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. All right, I'll see you guys on next time.